All right, Chad, big games here in the evening in the SEC, Texas at Arkansas, 7 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. Them Texas Longhorns, man, the spread just keeps getting bigger and bigger, favored <laughs> by seven and a half. And before you make your pick, Shane, let's mm-hmm. kick it over to our interview with John Neighbors of 103.7 The Buzz. All right, so we're uh, once again joined by John Neighbors, the host of the outstanding show, The Out of Bounds, on 103.7 The Buzz. He's also a host of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You can follow him at Buzz John Neighbors. John, I really appreciate you. Yeah, it's good to be on with you, man. How's everything going? Oh, man, it's going great so far. And week one was fantastic, but we did have a lot of cupcakes on the schedule. Now we're getting into... Uh, the games we've all been dying to see, and, and the one at the top of my list, I know it's on top of yours as well, Texas coming in to Fayetteville. Just how excited is uh, this entire state for this game after not even months and months, but really years and years of anticipation? Yeah, it's funny because I said this on my show yesterday that in the state of Arkansas, you have the Razorbacks and that's it. I think most people know that. There's no pro teams. There's no... Other big-time colleges, it's the Razorbacks. And so the biggest sport of the Razorbacks, of course, of course, with excitement and everything, is football. Like, they love all the sports, but football is still the big dog, just like it is at all ever, at other SEC schools. So when you have Razorback football, the number one thing in the state, going up against a big-time opponent like Texas at home in Fayetteville, an old rival, it's just this is the biggest event of the year. I, I don't I'm not saying that lightly in the state of Arkansas. This is the biggest event of this year and might even be one of the biggest events that happens over the next few years, depending on how things go, because this is it. This is what people have been waiting on. And so the energy, the excitement is at an all time high. I don't think there's anybody in the state of Arkansas, even people who don't follow Razorback football that don't know about this game. And that's going to either be at the game or at least watching it on TV. Now, uh, I really wanted to get your thoughts on the the fan base because I know you're as plugged in as literally anybody out there on Razorback Nation. And, of course, Texas is coming in as the uh, favorites in the game. But uh, what's the sense you get from the fan base that is expecting a win while, you know, seemingly, you know, all the national media and uh, people across the country expect Texas to kind of come in here and just roll? Uh, What's the expectation level within that state that uh, Arkansas gets a win, and, and they probably appreciate the fact that they're the underdogs, if, if I had to guess. Well, it's funny because they are the underdogs all the time. Like every game last year, Arkansas was the underdog, and they won four games. And I know that they'll say they won three, but they won four. We all know that Auburn was a victory game. So it's like the fact that they have that much of a, like just getting used to the fact that they are the underdogs all the time, that doesn't even phase Razorback fans anymore. Like they don't care. Because everyone's going to pick against them anyways. So why not? Why even look at it? So they're looking at it from the perspective of, listen, we got a good chance to beat Texas because we had a couple good wins last year. Uh, We think Sam Pittman and his coaching staff has got us going in the right direction. Texas is a good team, but not unbeatable. It doesn't seem like they are just this, uh, this titan that you will not be able to take down. And it's in Fayetteville. It's in your backyard. And the atmosphere is definitely going to be as as lit as ever so it's just all those things factoring into it it seems like Razorback fans even if they don't win they know it's going to be a good game they know it's going to be a close one and they know that Sam Pittman's going to have his guys ready so they're expecting to win they want to win but uh, since it's the second game of the season it's always kind of hard to really make good predictions on what's going to happen in a game like that. How much do you think uh, last season not having full attendance you know maybe that plays an advantage for Arkansas uh, this in this game in particular, because who knows how many of these Texas guys have even played in front of a full stadium on the road. And we know they're going to get that this weekend. Uh, I just, you know, I get this sense that we're underrating home field advantage this season. And I think we're really going to get that this weekend. Uh, are, would you buy into that narrative? I would. I would. I think that there is a lot to be said about that because Even from the opposite side, Arkansas last week against Rice, they struggled in the first half a big time. And K.J. Jefferson, the quarterback, was definitely one of the reasons why they struggled. 
And uh, Sam Pittman, after the game, even chalked it up. He's like, hey, I, I think that there was a lot of nerves. I think the crowd being there once again, you know, having a full – it wasn't full, but having a lot of fans there that are loud and, and energetic in the atmosphere, you get to have the band out there again. You get to run through the A again. He's like, it kind of got to a few of the guys. And so I think it's going to be the same on the opposite side where, you know, Texas, uh, not to say that, oh, man, they don't know anything about Arkansas until they come in here. It's like it's going to be a wild atmosphere, but I'll be curious to see maybe in the beginning of the game. If the the crowd noise and the atmosphere doesn't get to Texas a little bit, which, of course, is what Arkansas wants. But, yeah, I think I think a full stadium, which, of course, this game's going to break the attendance record for Arkansas for sure. Uh, I think that uh, all those things playing into this is going to have an impact either positively for Arkansas or negatively for Texas. One of the two. Now you hit on K.J. Jefferson and his uh, struggles. He still scored three touchdowns and. Interestingly enough, that was the uh, margin of victory there against Rice. But uh, do you think he bounces back? How much confidence do you have in that? And uh, what's it going to take? You know, you know, and not maybe not in stats or anything like that. But uh, is he going to need to play his best game to beat Texas? Do you think? I think so. I, I mean, Texas is a team that obviously is going to have a lot to do with their running attack, and you know, the Bijan Robinson's really good down there, and. Uh, you know, the defensively, they got some talent there as well. But the X factor in this game is KJ Jefferson. And I do have faith. I know Razorback fans are still a little suspect and, you know, rightfully so. But I looked at it as and I looked at it as Kate from KJ Jefferson's perspective, as well as the rest of the Arkansas game against Rice perspective. In previous years at halftime, if they were down by three points or 10 points or a touchdown or whatever to an inferior opponent, they would have rolled over and died. They didn't do that in this game. They came back and won, scored 21, covered the spread, all of that. KJ was the biggest factor in all that, too. He was horrendous in the first half. But in the second half, he goes 8 of 10. He, he rushes for touchdowns. He throws a touchdown pass. He got into the groove that everyone was hoping to see. So I look at it from, okay, that first half was not the character of or what we were going to see from KJ. The second half was. That was what we're supposed to see. That's the way he's supposed to play. And that's why I have a little more confidence heading into Texas because he saw it out on the field. He was able to play that way out on the field. And Sam Pittman and the coaching staff have all the you know, faith in the world in him to do it. So I look at it as he's going to be all right. He, that's the KJ Jefferson we saw in the second half. He knocked the cobwebs off. He got the nerves shaken out. Now he's ready to go into Texas. I can't believe I forgot to ask you this. I meant to start the show with it. But uh, over under – Five targeting calls in this damn game where we don't get – but we got we got to fix this damn penalty, don't you think? Dude, it's it's so bad. And it sucks because Bumper Pool, the star linebacker for Arkansas, is going to be out for the first half of this game because of uh, the game last week. Grant Morgan, luckily, his tar he got ejected for targeting last weekend too, but his was in the first half, so he won't miss this game. And I don't know if anyone knew this because I for forgot about it. The other linebacker, Hayden Henry – sat out the first half against Rice because he got ejected for targeting in the second half against the Alabama game last year. So it's like, oh, so it carries over into the next year. So he had to sit out the first half because of that. I'm like, this is the <laughs> stupidest thing of all time. And it seems like everybody, every, everyone I've talked to, and even all the coaches and players, it's like they understand it that targeting is there and it needs to be there because it's protecting the players. But the punishment does not fit the crime. It just doesn't. Like I said on my show the other day that you could have a defensive lineman go up and stone cold stun the quarterback after he like threw the ball. And you get the same punishment for that that you would in trying to make a football play like that just is, is egregious. It does not make any sense whatsoever. So I'm like, something needs to change. Something needs to be done about this rule. And it needs to be done right now, because the last thing you ever want to see for the rest of college football is games being won or lost, not because of what's going on on the field, but because who's not on the field because of some guy just making trying to make a football play. Now, there's so much hype around the uh, Texas running back, Bijan Robinson, I think is his name. He seems legit, but do you think that provides any motivation to uh, Arkansas's Traylon Smith, who he looks like a hell of a running back too? And, you know, could would it stun you if uh, by the end of the game we're talking about uh, Arkansas having the better running back in this matchup? You know, I'm I'm hoping that is the case because Traylon Smith is a he's really good. I, I mean, he's got uh, a scat back mentality. He's he's small, but he's fast, and you know he hits the hole hard. He's not gonna you know ever stiff arm anybody or anything like that. He doesn't have a lot of power, but 
he runs really hard. And I think that that's uh, something that may even get popped up here. But I'm telling you right now, you, everyone needs to take a look at Rocket Sanders, Raheem Rocket Sanders, number five for Arkansas. It looks a little weird seeing a number five running back back there, could not name Darren McFadden. Mm-hmm. But the guy is a true freshman. He's 6'1, 235 pounds, and he runs with power and he's got speed. The coaching staff's been raving about him in this uh, fall camp. And he, you got to see a little bit of him against Rice. And you kind of saw, okay, this this guy, if he breaks one, you know he's going to be gone. So I, I th- I'm just telling everybody to go watch watch out for this guy. I think that he has potential to be all SEC freshman when it's all said and done because he he has that skill set. And I think that if Traylon Smith can't get going against Texas, they'll be all right because Rocket Sanders will be able to pick up right where he left off. Now everybody's praising Steve Sarkeesian for being an outstanding play caller, which he is, but uh... – you know, let's not forget on the other side, he's going up against Barry Odom, who may be the best defensive coordinator in the nation. Do you, is this the coaching matchup that, that will determine the game? I know you called uh, K.J. Jefferson the X factor, but and I agree with that. But at the, at the same time, I think it, it really comes down to this the coaching battle here between Sarkeesian and Barry Odom. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, and first off, let me just say this, which I know people probably, especially if you're Texas fans or whatnot, will get mad, but Okay, Steve Sarkeesian, is he a great play caller? I'm going to give him credit. But the fact is, is it makes it a lot easier to play call when you're at USC and you're at Alabama and now you're at Texas. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's it makes it a lot easier. So I'm not taking anything away from him. It's just the talent has to be there, too. <laughs> so uh, maybe he's got it at Texas. I don't know. But I just I always feel like, hey, listen, you know, I, I respect more people like Barry Odom, who was like doing it at Missouri, right. where you're not getting five star elite talent. Than what you would with Steve Sarkeesian, where every stop he's had has been nothing but five star talent. So, but going back to your question about the matchup and everything, I think that that is a case because Barry Odom, without a doubt, is the best assistant coach on this staff. And the fact that he turned down Texas and turned down LSU to stay at Arkansas for less money is insane. But it just shows how much he loves coaching with Sam Pittman. And I think Sam Pittman understands too that he's pivotal to this team's success. I think that as long as everyone's going to be healthy and, and the depth's going to be there, Arkansas and, and Barry Odom is going to do all right against Texas. Like, I don't see Texas score more than 35 points against Arkansas. And I, will that be enough to win the game? I don't know. But I don't see Texas just coming in and doing what they want to against Arkansas's defense. They got too much experience. They got a lot more depth. And they got Barry Odom, who, you know, every he's got certain matchups, man. Like, he's got certain guys, like against Lane Kiffin, he's always done really well. Um, against a Mike Leach offense. He's always done really well. And those are two of the reasons why Arkansas won those games last year against Ar- uh, Ole Miss and Mississippi State is because of the defensive matchup. He understands them well. I think that Barry Odom is going to understand Steve Sarkeesian a lot more, have the matchups, know how to slow him down. Now it's going to be about executing it. But I like Barry Odom in this matchup because he always does a really good job against opposing offensive gurus finding how, an exploitation of their weaknesses and making it happen for him. So I think that he's going to slow down this offense. All right, moment of truth. John, who you got in the matchup, Texas and Arkansas? Who's winning the game? I'm going to stick with my original prediction for the season. I got Arkansas winning this game. It's going to be a fight. It's going to be a close one. I think it's going to be one that uh, is frustrating, maybe at times for Razorback fans to watch, but energetic. I think – Arkansas wins this game 28 to 24. I, I think that you're you're gonna have a little bit of a back and forth. I think Arkansas scores a late touchdown to put it away. And the defense for Arkansas keeps Texas from scoring and they get out of there with the victory. They're two and zero. maybe a top 25 team. We'll see. But I think that this is going to be the game, the the stamp on Sam Pittman at Arkansas, where they're no longer just a cute little underdog story. They're actually a legitimate team in the SEC that people have to look out for. All right, I like that answer. And, uh, you know, final thing, when Arkansas does beat Texas, over under on uh, what time you're going to bed after you're partying all night uh, from that game? I don't think I'm going to go to bed uh, at all. <laughs> I think I think it's going to be uh, – I, I mean, I may just, you know, go into Sunday just kind of <laughs> wandering the state of Arkansas, not knowing where I am, not knowing what's to happen. Hopefully I find my way home somehow, but <laughs> it's uh, it's going to be a celebration like no other. Cause here's the thing, Mike, Arkansas has had some big games like this, some atmospheric games. Like there's very few 2010 Bama comes to mind. 2004 Texas was another big one. 
Uh, they've had some big games like this, but the problem was is Arkansas always lost those games. Like they have always lost them. If they finally win a game that has all the hype surrounding it, it's going to be mean that much more to the Razorback fans here in the state of Arkansas. Well, absolutely. I appreciate you hopping on the line, John. John Neighbors, host of the Out of Bounds Show on 103.7 The Buzz and the host of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Thanks again, John. I really appreciate you. No problem, man. Appreciate you.